Good evening. Welcome to the Camden Opera House. Um, my name is Beth O'Connor. I'm the front of the house manager. Usually Dave Morrison is in this position and he does a much, much better job. Um, I just like getting people in and out of the theater. Uh, so welcome. Um, thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, this should be a terrific show. Um, we're able to put on the soundtrack series in the Blue Cafe and our summer sound series and our theater camp, all because of donations that you all give to our community arts fund. So thank you so much for helping us put on these programs here at the Camden Opera House. It makes all the difference in the world, so we appreciate it. Um, you're in for a terrific show. To oh, hold on, da I can hear Dagny in my head. She just said, <laughs> don't forget to tell them about Eileen Ivers is gonna be here next weekend. On the 22nd, that's going to be a fantastic show. And then April 12th, we have the Tannehill uh, Weavers are going to be here. So also a terrific show. So come back out for that. And check out our website for any other upcoming shows that we have, camdenoperahouse.com. Anyway, now back to this. Um, tonight's going to be a terrific show. Um, Dan Passamato and Jim Highland are gonna put on a terrific show, so you were in for a treat. Again, thank you so much for coming, and uh, let's give them a big hand and welcome to the Camden Opera House. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming out tonight, supporting live music and the Camden Opera House. It's very dark out there. We can't really see you, but uh, I can tell you that you sound like a cultured, good-looking crowd. <laughs> so we're going to give you a mix of uh, probably the best term is music traditionally played in Ireland, because they play not just Irish music, they play Scottish, they play some music from Brittany, uh, some music from Cornwall, other places. So we're gonna give you a good mix, it'll be mostly Irish, but we, we hope you enjoy it, and, and we're gonna tell you a little, little bit about the tunes uh, before we start them. The first set of jigs is uh, uh, a mixed set. The, the first one is called a, a close approximation of the pronunciation is Kerfunkton, and it's not a very Irish si sounding name, but it was written by Hamish Hamilton. He's a noted flute maker and flute player from County Cork. And he lived for a time in Brittany, in a suburb of Compare, which was called Kerfunkton, uh, only it's pronounced a little differently in the local dialect. And then we're gonna go into the Housemaid, and it's a very old tune from the 1800s, and then the alternate title is uh, Humors of Glen Dart. And the third tune is a modern one called The Haunted House by the flute player uh, Michael McGoldrick. I'm sorry, Vincent Broderick. Vincent Broderick. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to play. Well, actually, I'm going to start off a uh, solo, uh, very old Irish air called The Little Red Lark. And the words go uh, something to the effect of something, somebody's looking out his bedroom window in the morning thinking of all the troubles that life is going to bring him that day, and he sees this little lark cheerily singing, trying to encourage him that uh, it's not so bad. Go ahead, you can, you can get through. And after that, we're going to play actually a Scottish tune. It's a hornpipe called the Hut on Staffan Island. And Staffan Island is in the Hebrides uh, in Scotland. And it's written by uh, a great piano accordion player uh, by the name of Phil Cunningham. And some of you may remember Silly Wizard a long time ago. He was a founding member of that group. And uh, Phil is half Irish and half Scottish. So he says it causes him a problem sometimes. When he goes into a pub, half of him always wants a drink, and the other half doesn't want to pay for it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to play some controversial tunes for you. One, that the title is actually known as the controversial. Uh, set of three reels, and the first one is uh, by John Nolan, the uh, box player. Incidentally, this 
technically is a button accordion, but in Irish music, it's almost always referred to as the box. So he's a great box player uh, now living in New Jersey, named after a friend of his. And the second tune has an interesting uh, uh, tale behind it. Uh, some of you may know the fiddler Liz Carroll. She was in Chicago and she was uh, a guest uh, musician on uh, a, mu uh, a box player by the name of Tommy McGuire. He asked her if she would sit in for a few tunes, so she said, sure. So they're in the studio and he says, let's start off with a good old reel from County Offaly. And he plays her a few notes and uh, she says, well, Billy McComiskey wrote that. And Billy McComiskey is a great box player from Baltimore. And Tommy says, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. It's an old Offaly tune. It's played everywhere in Offaly. No, no, no. Uh, it's an old tune. It's, he couldn't have written it. And she said, well, actually, he did. And so th there's a little, uh, you know, a little argument there. And then uh, he called it whatever name he thought it was and actually asked uh, 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 Billy about it. And Billy said he actually wrote it for a friend of his. He said the real name is Maureen Glynn's Reel. But no one uses that name. It's known now as the controversial reel because it's a nice story, you know. <laughs> and then we finish up with uh, the blacksmiths. Thank you. 
Thanks very much. Thank you. And next we get to the high culture part of the evening. It's all high culture, but this is even more so. These are tunes that are 300 years old, some of them a, a bit more. And they were composed by what many people consider to be the National Bard of Ireland. It's Turla O'Carolan. And he lived at the tail end of the Baroque era. And he died in 1738, 39, I think. Uh, and he went blind as a teenager. He was 18 years old and he had smallpox. And so he was wondering how he was, he was gonna make his way in the, in the world. And his father was employed by a, a wealthy family as a blacksmith. And so the uh, woman of the house uh, gave O'Carolan harp lessons. And for three years he studied the harp. He was blind by, by then, so he, I don't think he made any harps, but he certainly apprenticed to a, a master harper, and he became very good. So at the age of 21, he set out on his own to tour Ireland and entertain the aristocracy and compose tunes uh, in return for them putting him up for weeks or months at a time. And in Ireland at that time, there was a whole circuit of manor houses and estates where a lot of touring musicians uh, would come and they would be sponsored and the lord of the house would sort of brag and invite all the people he knew in the area to come and they'd have private concerts and uh, tunes would be composed by O'Carroll in, in their honor. And there wasn't just Irish on the circuit. There were Italians, there were French, uh, people from the musicians from the Netherlands. And so O'Carroll uh, invented, sort of invented, he's credited with inventing this term planksty. Planksty is sort of like a a made up word in, in Irish and it means in praise of. So he would compose these tunes, Planks the Irwin, it's the second tune we're going to play. Uh, Planks the uh, Fanny Power, who was a patron of his. And the first tune has a very catchy title of Planks the 174 because uh, there's no name for it. And it was recorded in a book of old tunes uh, as the 174th entry. And so, uh, O'Carolan is, uh, none of the tunes were written down actually when he was alive, or very few of them. There's about 220 known to exist. And um, uh, we're gonna play three of them for you. And I think you'll, you'll well, we hope you agree, they're very beautiful tunes. Thank you. 
Thanks very much. Okay, uh, strangely enough, uh, we're going to do a Irish song that's about drinking. This uh, kind of chronicles um, the story of this lad, Jock Stewart, who's just his, well, let's just say you'd, you'd want him for a friend because he pays for all the beer. <coughs> well, my name is Jock Stewart, and I'm an easy-going man, and a roving young fella I even. So be easy and free when you're drinking with me. I'm a man you don't meet every day. I have acres of land and man at my command. And I've always a shilling to spend. So be easy and free, sing it. Oh, and you're drinking with me. I'm a man you don't meet every day. Well, I took down my gun, and with my dog I did hung, along by the river killed there. So be easy and free. When you're drinking with me, I'm a man you don't meet every day. Thanks so much. Um, we have been doing the Irish sessions in the Belfast area, my girlfriend Jody Johnstone and myself, for the past 14 years. We, were, we started out at the dance studio, and then we went to Belducat, and we went to Darby's, and we're now at the Homeport Inn, which is over in Searsport. If you've been on a Thursday night, it's quite a session. So uh, this is uh, cheap commerce here. We're trying to get you out to, uh, to see us at, at the, the Irish session. So come on by and uh, buy yourself a beer. Or maybe Jock Stewart will buy you one. So some of you may have been wondering, what, what are these other two instruments up there for? Well, this one is the standby. Uh, I, I've had a traumatic traumatic event one time I, I was playing with only one box and a reed went out and when that happens there's there's nothing you can do you have to work around it well it was it was a reed that I needed that note in just about every segment of every tune so it was very embarrassing so I always carry a spare and uh, 
I refer to them as Manny, Moe, and Jack. And uh, this one's made in Ireland, up here on the bench. That one's made in France, and this one's made in Italy. And this is slightly different. You can tell it's uh, only one row, 10 buttons, which means 20 notes. Each button has two notes. You, you push in, you get one note. You draw out, you get another note. And this is sort of 1880s style. And this is the precursor to all piano accordions. This is what they, they look like at first. And in Ireland, uh, before the introduction of this instrument, uh, they would have Cayley dances, you know, a lot of times outside at the crossroads or in halls. And the fiddle, which is king in Ireland, the fiddle is, is the, the main instrument uh, in Ireland. And uh, it didn't carry. It wasn't loud enough. It's before uh, amplification was available. So when this came, this has a, a louder, brighter sound. So uh, a, a lot of times it was a little bit expensive at first. So farmers or... or people would chip in and three or four of them would buy one of these and they would switch it off. So if uh, Sean was gonna play at the Cayley, he would go and do that. And then if it was uh, Seamus the next week, they'd take it home to his barn and hang it on a nail by the strap and then uh, they trade off like that. And so now it's largely died out. Uh, the only place in Ireland where you really hear this a lot is far western Galway, Connemara. And there, you will hear it very often. So I'm going to play a couple of tunes I got from the playing of Kevin Burke. The first one is a tune. He grew up in London. His family is from Sligo, but he grew up in London. And he used to go and sit next to a, a really good Galway fiddler called Lucy Farr. And he liked one of the tunes she played, and, and he asked her the name, and she didn't know it. So uh, she told him it was a fling. And it turns out it wasn't a fling. It's a more like a Straspe or a Schottisch. But anyway, he named it Lucy's Fling, and you'll see it on a lot of recordings. That's what, that's what it's called. And then the next one is, um, I can't pronounce it. It's in Gaelic. It's uh, Scots Gaelic. And basically, uh, it's mouth music. And mouth music in Scotland, those of you may, may know, uh, a lot of times women were engaged in very tedious, very long uh, work. Uh, weaving uh, by hand, uh, knitting, weaving, uh, blankets, uh, tartan, cloth, a lot of that. And so they didn't have any instruments to break the monotony. So they used their voices as instruments. And so a lot of the, uh, the words don't make sense because they needed a, a rhyming word, say, at the end of a verse, and they couldn't find an appropriate word. They just made one up or picked another word that didn't make any sense. And some of them have been known to have very body uh, intervals. Uh, and this particular one is called Many of the Things I Saw. And it's about a woman going out in the village at night and looking in people's windows. So <laughs> you can only imagine what, <laughs> what prompted that title. And then the last one is Some Say the Devil's Dead. And that particular tune has been around since the late 1700s. And the Irish, the Scots, the Welsh, the English, they all have their own verses to it. And the Irish verse, uh, the chorus goes something like, some say, uh, the title of the tune is Some Say the Devil's Dead. The chorus goes, some say the devil's dead and buried in Killarney. More say he rose again and joined the British Army. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thanks very much. Thank you. And it's funny, this is a traditional instrument. And because someone decided to put the air release button here, which is the absolute worst place they could have put it, the tradition has carried on. And that's where they still put it today, even though it will be much more uh, usable uh, another location. So sometimes tradition isn't all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to play some, some more reels for you. Uh, first one is Far From Home. The uh, second one is Silver Spire. And the third one is Red Haired Lass. An hour goes, an hour goes by fast, doesn't it? I mean, about three quarters of the way through already. I wish you could. I wish we could see you guys. And I know you're out there somewhere. Oh, 
Okay, so we're going to play some polkas now. And uh, in most of Ar Ireland, they're, they're busy playing reels and jigs. And in Kerry and parts of uh, County Cork, they're down there playing polkas and slides. And so polkas are very popular at Cayley dances, Irish traditional dances. So we're going to play a medley of them and uh, I'll tell you the names anyone's interested, but we're going to horse into them and just get through them so you can hear the difference in uh, anything else that we've played so far. Uh, the first tune is Johnny O'Leary's. He's a famous box player. There's a, actually a bronze statue of him in Killarney with his, uh, pardon me, his accordion. So, uh, trust me anyway. Um, yeah. And then we I'm go into trust. three polkas I learned from the plane of Mary Stanton. Uh, she's a beautiful singer and box player in Orne Moore, County Galway. And the names are Where Lilies Bloom, The New Market, and The Lakes of Sligo. And the important thing to rem remember about Irish tune names, uh, they're usually a, a subject to debate uh, unless you're talking to the person who actually composed it. A lot of times, th there's a very famous collection uh, was published in uh, 1903 and another volume 1907 by Captain Francis O'Neill uh, in Chicago. He was uh, superintendent of police there. And he, he compiled almost 2,000 tunes because he heard them around uh, uh, Chicago and he would put them down. If he didn't have a name for them, he made up a name. And if he heard a, sh a tune from the Shetland Islands, he would give it an Irish name. And then there it became an Irish tune. And, you know, a lot of people said, well, no, wait, you know, he played a little tricks like this. But because of him, those two volumes are still very much used today. And if it wouldn't have been for him, a lot of these tunes would have been simply lost. So, several polkas for you. Let's do one each, then. One each? One each, yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. Some people say, you know, four polkas strung together. If you play it two or three times each, I mean, that's weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> some people's <laughs> minds. And in some places in Ireland, if you go to Kerry or West Cork, you can play them all night at a session. If you go anywhere else in Ireland, they usually let you pay, play one set. One set of polkas and that's it. That's all they can take. <laughs> Thank you. Thought we might see you dancing on that one. <laughs> ah, some something you don't hear very often 
uh, nowadays is Irish marches. And they're popular for dancers, but you don't hear them a whole lot. So we're going to play you three uh, marches. The first one is the Centennial March, or Centenary March, the Centennial March. Uh, and it commemorated the 100th anniversary of the Christian Brothers in County Offaly. Uh, the second march is Let Aaron Remember. And it's hi historically significant because of the 1924 Olympics, uh, there was the Irish Free State, but they were not totally free. The regent was still the King of England. And so they went to compete in the Olympics, and the Irish Olympic team did not want uh, uh, God Save the King to be played, and there was no national anthem in Ireland. So they chose this, uh, the second march we're going to play for you, Let Aaron Remember, because it was sort of the theme song of the Irish Free State. And the last march is... Um, the wearing of the green, and it's also the same tune as uh, Rising of the Moon, which is a rebel song, but the wearing of the green is a little more lighthearted. And the first, uh, the first march I'm going to play for you, I have a friend in Portland where I used to, port the, the cool Portland, as uh, I, I've heard it called in Oregon. Uh, he's, he's from, the, I, w when I first went to Portland, Maine, I, I told the, the barista uh, that I was buying a coffee from that I was from the other Portland, and she said, oh, the cool Portland, so, <laughs> okay. Uh, but the first march, he said, he calls it the butter march. He grew up in Dublin, and he said there was a dairy that advertised butter uh, on a TV commercial, and, every and they played this music in the background all the time. So to him, it, uh, it, it's the butter march. Butter march. Thank you. Who's on time? Is she still on time? So yeah, it's unbelievable how fast this uh, has gone for us, anyway. And so we, we really, <laughs> I know some of you may have been dragged here by some, uh, you know, partner that likes this kind of music, but you know. You want to head for the jazz club next or whatever. <laughs> uh, we thank you for coming out and, and supporting live music and supporting this lovely 
uh, grand dame of an opera house. Yeah, yeah this is an amazing place. Yeah, and and the uh, and the so I would like to s thank the sound guys too because this was incredible. Yeah, well, yeah, very nice, very nice. And we want to thank uh, Seth and uh, Anthony, Anthony and Carl, and Carl and Beth, Beth and Beth and Dave Morrison who's not here tonight, but uh, that's who we've been working with. So we want to want to thank him as well. So we're going to play uh, some reels to you. close out. Pardon? Thank you guys, too. Glen Tong. Oh, yeah. Glen Tong is a town in uh, eastern Galway, I believe. Uh, and then we're going to go and play The Traveler. And believe it or not, The Traveler is played extensively in Quebec. It's uh, who knows if it was originally a Quebec tune or an Irish tune, but it's, it's played uh, very often up in Quebec. And the last tune is called Garrett Barry's, and it must be an old one because Garrett Barry was a blind piper, and he died in 1899. So he either composed it or played it a lot. <laughs>
Thanks very much. Thank you Thank very you much. Folks. It's a strange game we play, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Some of you may have noticed my strap was starting to come off my shoulder, and I was afraid that uh, I'd leave Jim on his own there. So we're going to end up with two tunes that are played uh, you want in, in Ireland uh, extensively, but in actual fact, they're of Scottish uh, origin. The first one is King of the Clans, and the second one is Mill Bray, written by Ronnie Cooper of the Shetland Isles. It's nice of the Scots to lend those tunes to the Irish, isn't it? Isn't that nice? Generosity. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very Thank much. Appreciate it. You guys are great. Thanks so much. And just, just remember, just remember, Christmas is coming up in nine months, and so uh, there's some CDs on a table somewhere Same. around here, uh, but they're not called CDs anymore. They're called cultural artifacts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Support your local pubs. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.